Okay, so welcome here on board Crazy Diamond and um, we thought it would be a really good idea to show you A, the boat. Um, we're not going to do the full tour right now because we're still learning to figure out where things are, where we're putting things and what things do. But one of the main points about Crazy uh, Diamond and the Sailing Chef is that these are the things that we're passionate about. Sailing, cooking, food. So what we're going to be doing is videos of our sailing adventures and cooking in this enormous galley uh, that, um, let's face it, I don't fit in too well. Um, one of the big issues about the boat and a lot of boats is that I'm six foot two and I don't really fit, but uh, we're, we're going to make it through. and. What we want to do, or what I particularly want to do, is show you that you can cook in a galley this big, fantastic meals, you can eat healthy, you can eat fresh food, uh, and we want to also, um, as well as just generally showing you our vlogging of, of what we're up to, um, show you some simple meals and, and things um, that you can do in a galley to make sure you're always eating well. Let's start with the tour, first things first. This is it. So this is all we've got to play with, is our uh, galley, which consists of a very simply a fridge. So you get yourself in here. Why does it work off? So this is our fridge. We've got a bag currently of vegetables in here. We've got some beers, we've got some food. It's not very deep, but it is, it is enough to keep everything we need fresh. Uh, we've got a bin, which is here. We have got some storage space underneath there, which we've got a few pans and bits and pieces in. We have got a enormous drawer under here where we keep some utensils and there is some space under here as well uh, where we can get chopping boards and the tops. We've got our phenomenal, I mean, catering experts everywhere are gonna be watching this one because we've got an enormous oven. And let, let me just put this all into, oh, I should, we're gimbaled at the moment because it's a sailing boat. So uh, when we're peeling over, that's the size of the frying pan, just to put that into perspective. We've got a grill underneath here. And then we've got two burner hob, which is gas. And then let me bring you across to the preparation area. So at the moment, we've got this as a worktop. And then underneath here, we have a sink. We've actually got two sinks, it's a fancy. We've got a drainer and, uh, and a main sink. So that is the complete summary of our gallery, AKA kitchen to those normal people at home. We've got some storage space also at the back here for our plates, bits and pieces. Got some herbs in here. Another little cavern at the back there for stuff. And then we keep our general storage bits and pieces and food around here. We're still figuring all this out though because we have no idea where to keep everything. All the other things I need to show you. Underneath here, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but we've got, this is basically my big storage where we keep all the pots, the pans. Because the one thing that we did with the boat, before we did anything else, was make sure we had all of our culinary tools, our pots, pans, graters, uh, bits and pieces, so we can cook, because as long as you're full, you're happy. All's good. <laughs> One thing I'm learning very quickly because of the lack of space is that your working methods on a boat need to be very different. And this doesn't necessarily restrict itself to a boat. If you don't have a very big kitchen or you've not got big preparation space, then you need to be creative. So the way in which that I have decided to cook, which you will see shortly, 
is your preparation methods. Instead of a, a, a normal way I would cook at home is I would chop my onion or I would chop my bits and pieces. They'd go in the pan, get more things out with the, the sort of space and the restrictions that you've got because my worktop and the space that I will be putting my chopping board is on my sink. It means I can't then fill pans up, I can't wash my hands. So what I need to do is prepare everything first and then we can begin to cook. Um, and I think it will be a bit more methodical that way. It will work better that way, but we shall see, we shall see. And things may evolve. Um, we're gonna be doing tonight a prawn risotto. Now, in true boat fashion, me as a chef, I'm not a chef, I'm a cook. I cook food, I cook lovely food. And we want to eat uh, fresh food, nice food, but we also want to be realistic. And I, I, I understand that not everybody, I think one of my big things about cooking and um, lots of, of sort of TV programs is the fact that you need to have this vinegar, that wine, this, uh, this spice. And, and in the real world, we have what we have. So lots of my food will not necessarily be the traditional way to cook, but it will be a lovely meal at the end of it. Um, and it might be substituting a certain thing. For instance, for the risotto tonight, we have no white wine on board, but we do have red wine and that will be delicious and that will work, but we're swapping that out. So the whole sort of, how can I put it? The, the point I guess I'm trying to get across is you don't need to be a stickler for a recipe. As long as you're doing the big thing about cooking food and cooking fresh and doing it yourself and having a go, um, everyone's a winner. What are you doing, chef? Okay, so we're prepping. First things first, the shallots. Well, the shallot. I should also mention that I've been a salesman for the last 15 years and I've done a lot of presenting videos of our products. So I'm gonna try and lose this whole serious showing you things to do and relax a little bit, but it is our first video. So give me some slack, please. Um, right, with a risotto, you basically are gonna need two pans. One is for your risotto, the other is for your stock. All your vegetable trimmings, bits and pieces that you're not using, go into the stock pot. Shallots. Also, do something actually, which I haven't done. Tip for your chopping board: stop it sliding around. Very simple. Well, it's simple if I had access to a sink, but we're learning to get over that, aren't we? It's not a problem. Is a bit of wet kitchen roll underneath your chopping board. And it'll stop it sliding around as long as it's not gonna sit in the sink. Okay, so fine dice. I'll fish your lots. Now chopping, take your time, don't cut your fingers off. One really simple way, one rule essentially with chopping and, and how chefs chop really fast is we're never ever gonna cut ourselves because you just follow a simple rule. Rule number one, your thumb always gets tucked behind your fingers. Rule number two is you bend your fingers in and your knife angle is always away. You take your time, you cut your shallots. Now again, I'm not in a Michelin star restaurant tonight, so we get it nice and finely diced. We don't worry too much about every piece of onion being the same. And we continue with our prep. I just literally spiked water everywhere. I forgot. We'll have to get used to this cooking. In a Can you grab the leak, please? That's been in the sink. I'm also going to use a leek in this. 
again, waste into the veg stock. You've got to consider the size of the veg and what the type of veg is. So for instance, we know that an onion and a leek are going to cook relatively similar. The leek will be a little less because it's a little thinner. The carrot, however, which you don't always put in a risotto, but we want it tonight, is going to take longer to cook. So what do we do with that? We ensure that it's cut smaller. This way, everything can go in the pan at the same time. And it'll all cook evenly. Okay, celery, and then we need some garlic. Right, this is the crazy, I'm not the crazy chef. We're on board Crazy Diamond. This is the Sailing Chef's Hot Tip for Garlic which is controversial to some people, right? Simple, simple way, because peeling garlic does my head in. And one of the easiest ways is you take off the root and then you crush it. Now that's a common thing, but some chefs will say that that ruins the flavor, it changes the flavor profile. I would challenge anybody to taste a crushed piece of garlic like this or a peeled and chopped piece of garlic. I can't see there being much difference. And if people can taste the difference, well, I would bow because your palate is greater than mine. Right, all is good. Asparagus, and then we'll do some. Now the asparagus isn't gonna go in with the main things, but you'll see that in a second, because it doesn't take very long to cook. How do we do our asparagus? Simple, we snap it. That's where it ends, a good bit ends. We take that off, and it goes into our stock. And then all I'm gonna do with this is just take it underneath the heads, because these bits will always cook. That's the main stalk. I'm not shaving them and doing all of that. And I would say that we're gonna do some lovely meals. We're gonna do some real fine dining meals, but the reality is that most nights of the week, you just want some quick and easy food. And that's what we wanna show you. And more to the point, when you're cooking on a boat, you've not got all the space to play with, but you wanna eat decent food. And if you're out on a passage that's cold, as it is now in December, you just want something lovely, warm, and nutritious to keep you going. Right, so we are now almost done with our prep. We're gonna slice some herbs and then we can get cracking. Okay, so I'm gonna prep my prawns. These are actually already prepared, but I wanna butterfly them. So we split the back. Now, if they haven't been prepared, what you're gonna find is a vein down the back. You should have all watched enough cooking shows to figure that out. But with these, I just simply want to butterfly them because then when they cook, they'll open out nicely, they'll cook super quick, and it means that we can just literally do them for a minute or so on each side. And they'll be nice and juicy, tender, and not cooked like rubbery bullets. Okay, so prawns are now butterflied. Scored down the back. Again, where you've got packaging such as this, you don't need to put it in another pot. It saves the washing up. And on a boat this size, as I'm pointing out, I'm going to do a little salt. So I always like to season everything beforehand. Now, there is a method of thought salt does dry things out, so you only want to sprinkle. But I find that this makes them lovely, juicy and tender. So, we've got our prawns prepped. We've got our veg prepped. And we've got our stock pot. But what I'm gonna add to this is, because we haven't been shopping and got some fresh 
uh, herbs, unfortunately. So we're going to have to make do with the dried, but that's all good. Uh, so I'm going to add some, a little bit of oregano. A little bit of mixed herbs, which has got thyme, some parsley in there, got some sage and some basil and some more oregano. Basically we want it nice and herby. Then I'm gonna stick a couple of bay leaves in here, like so. Get a bit of strength in there. And we need, have we got, I've got some fish stock, which I'm gonna use, but I also want some chicken stock. Why is I've that? got so much room above my head. No excuses. No excuses. I'm going to use half a beef stock. Beef with prawns? Well, yeah. yeah it should go as well. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you wouldn't use this traditionally, but it's what I've got, and this is the point. It's going to taste lovely. Okay, so I'm waiting for the kettle to boil at the moment. We're going to clean up and we're going to wash up. And I think the only way, I mean, in any kitchen, you always want to be tidy is one of the main things because you can't think and you can't see what you're doing if you've got clutter and rubbish everywhere. Use some oil and then what I'm also going to do It's just a little kiss of butter. We're not James Martin. So we won't be using blocks of butter. We're gonna try and keep this as healthy as we possibly can. Um, We've got to fit onto our boat. Because we need to fit onto our <laughs> boat. And as you can see, I haven't got much room to play with here in this galley. <laughs> so we'll wait for that to get to temperature. This is one of the things I'm getting used to on the boat is I do enjoy gas, but the amount that we get here is not great, so things take a little bit longer to get to fruition. Right, in we're gonna go with our garlic, our celery, our carrot, our onions, and our leeks. Slowly, I'm putting these in quite early because you don't wanna burn the life out of these. They wanna be gently warmed, so they go nice and translucent and just soften up, we don't want to fry them. Our stock is probably a little bit white, I think it a little bit. One of the things I've realised is we need a ladle. I thought we had a ladle. We don't have a ladle. So we're going to have to spoon it in. So we, we do have a sieve though, don't we? Another tip when you're cooking things like this is leave them. Get them coated in the oil or whatever you've got and then just let them sit there for a minute. Because people have the tendency to play with things and play with things. And with the risotto, it needs constant stirring and it needs constant care and attention, but not at this stage. So we just let them cook nicely for the time being. And then the next step is we're gonna go in with our rice. We've got some beautiful organic uh, Aborio Dalesford rice here. Food is your life. It's what you put into your body, so buy the best you can always. Whatever you can afford, get the best, because it's the thing that we put inside ourselves to keep ourselves healthy and alive. So don't scrub on that. And then we're going to go in with our rice, 
uh, we're gonna fry our rice in our oil, then we're gonna add some wine, we're gonna add some vinegar, and uh, we're gonna fry that off. Once the rice is soaked that up, we're then gonna start labeling it our stock. What's going in now? So we are now using some uh, apple cider vinegar because this is what we've got. Now, vinegar is a really good tip for things like stews. I mean, you can use any vinegar. You've got white wine vinegar, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. There's different ones, sherry vinegar. Um, and th there are specifics for specific meals, but equally, you get in that acidity. And what vinegar will do, so in things like spag bowls, uh, curries, stews, if at the early stage when you're frying your veg off, you give it some vinegar, what it will do is give you a depth of flavour. You won't necessarily be able to taste it, but you fry it all off, it'll all absolve, and it will just add some depth to the dish. Uh, so we want some vinegar, and then we're going to do, as I said, obviously we're in a prawn risotto. Typically you'd use a white wine or a rosé. We don't have that, we have a red. We actually have a Malbec, which is a very deep, rich red. But it will still work and it will still taste nice. And this is what we've got to play with on the boat right now. So I'm just adding a splash of that, sort of half a glass. Because it's red, we don't want to make it too strong. Okay, so we'll let that soak that up and then what we're going to do is start ladling in the stock or spooning in the stock. Um, and with a risotto, it's very simple. You spoon some stock in, you stir it, you keep stirring it and you let it soak up that uh, stock and then you add some more and you add some more until it's done. Okay, I reckon I'm a few ladles off. We'll give it a try and then what I'm going to do because I like to cook where's my prawns I like to cook these independently you can just throw them in so don't worry about that but for me I like to fry them off because I just think it gets them that little bit of crunch on the outside get them done and what I'm going to do again you would get a frying pan out if you're in a kitchen or you do this separately we've not got that space to play with so when I'm done with my stock I'm going to get rid of this I'm going to give it a quick wipe around and rinse out. We're going to stick some oil in there and then we're going to fry our prawns off for a minute or two. They'll go in right at the last minute. And then shortly, when our rice is almost cooked, we're going to add a ladle of stock to finish her off. We're going to put our asparagus in because this is literally going to take three, four minutes to cook. And uh, we'll season up. And then I always finish the risotto off with some butter uh, and some parmesan that we've got in the fridge. So we'll do that. We figured that most people right now will be filming themselves. Mm. And we won't. We won't. We'll do a bit of eating. I realise if you want to do this, you've got to uh, pick up the camera. I'll we'll just set the camera up all the time. Yeah. Over to YouTube. Don't underestimate the work that goes into the YouTube video. I just want to eat my dinner. Not our ones, but everyone else's ones. 
It's amazing, babe. It's really delicious. There we go.